and here we go with another episode of In a Perfect World with me, Flash, instead of me and Vinny, Vinny and, uh, or Rob, or anybody, Rob had to take off and go do some adult stuff in town, and uh, tonight, I'm going to do In a Perfect World solo. So let me type this in the thing for Grimner so he has his stuff he needs. Because I don't do this stuff um, before it or it won't stay. It's very strange. Got to do it while I'm talking. And <clears throat> tonight, <laughs> I'm a uh, little bit flustered because I've killed more co-hosts than anybody in the uh, radio... The <laughs> RLM radio field. <laughs> All my co-hosts croak. Go off and find other shit to do when I need them. So, uh, I'm kind of enjoying it. Uh, doing this alone is very, very entertaining. Anyway, so one more time. In a perfect world, I'm flashed. We're at reallibertymedia.com is the chat room I, I use to interact with my Fan, friends and foes, I suppose you would call it. And uh, I'll say hello. And Grimner carries this in other places. But if you're listening to this, you already know where he plays it. So telling you is redundant. I leave that to Vinny or Rob or anybody that'll do it. Anyway, it, to the RLM, it's Barman. We got Cowboy Tech. Hey, Cowboy. Uh, Grimner, Miss Kate, Asmo. Chloe, Chalcedony, Chalcedony, Chloe, Cyber Noodle, Cyborg Noodle, <laughs> D, D underscore C, hey Don, uh, Echelon, me, I be Don C, Meisterbrow, hey Woody, uh, Pox Fight, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Rooms, Skittle, Vinny, The Phantom, uh, Colfax 101, Dakota Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor, Java Doctor 2, he's double dipping on us, J's and 9's and J's, I wonder if he's listening though, uh, Kozu, mm, Sock Puppet, and Van Meter, hey Donna, Rob had to go out of town too, what a shame, uh, he was going to do the show with me tonight, but a, a matter of importance came up, and he needed to take a a little time to go take over problems, so I'm going to do the show tonight about what's been going on in my head anyway, I think, is all this confusion we have about an energy. <clears throat> Where to start with it, too, because, Jesus Christ, you got the, the Tesla kind of energy, and then you got the food and water kind of energy, and it's it comes into us from different ways but we're really not as you know and when we go to school they don't spend a lot of time you know teaching that particular shit to you until you you know pay them to go to school or whatever they call it college they've got you con you go to school for 12 years to learn how to go to school for eight more years <laughs> and at an early age i I just thought that was a big waste of time. I didn't understand why it took so long to learn how to change a tire. You know, all these things that people want to complicate with. You need years and years of uh, books and and theories and principles and speeches and shit up to your eyeballs so that you can learn how to do something. And I think it's a bunch of crap. I can't think of anything that I succeeded at that it took me four years to learn. Maybe I'm missing something here. Because I see people on the reallibertymedia.chat.com chat occasionally, you know, fluff up education because maybe they got one. And I suppose if you go through the tortures and the, the struggle of that shit to get there, I guess it would be an accomplishment. I just thought it was useless, wasted time to to not really do anything except put out money so that somebody else can tell you what you can do. I've always had a very limited 
uh, selfish perspective on other people telling me what to do about anything. You know, even if I'm supposed to pay you to tell me, I don't want to. <laughs> Might be the Jew in me or something. Let me go to the chat and see if anybody's got anything going on. Let's see. Uh, Miss Kate said, perfect timing in a perfect world. Okay, so I must beat the two minutes fast because I started at two minutes after by my computer, which is even different to my wife's, and I don't, I don't understand I don't understand the computer enough to understand why the clock wouldn't just automatically be set correctly. But for some reason, it's two minutes fast. Maybe I'm living in another dimension. Hmm. The flash zone. <laughs> but I doubt it. Anyway, so uh, Grimner says, Yeah, I need to remove Vinny from my pop-up show notices thing. Yeah, all these people quitting. Uh, Vinny, I swear I'm going to get a grip and bring my ass back to air. Oh, he's having computer and, uh, you know, just stuff problems, Grim. It's, you know, Vinny, if he gets to be on the radio, he'll do it. He, he's a ham bone. He's like me. He wants to do it, with, but I want to do it with somebody else. And <laughs> I keep getting, I keep getting into a situation where if I want to do it at all, I got to do it alone. Ooh, how scary. Hmm. To sit and talk to yourself for two hours and not have any particular direction to go in is it's fun and entertaining. I recommend it to others. Like Art Underground tried it, and for some reason he uh, didn't seem to care for the audience. <laughs> some people in the audience didn't agree with his perspective of everything, I suppose. <laughs> and... and uh, you know, that, that run in the muck shit that anarchists do because we, we question authority. I don't mean it as a group or any of that horse shit. I just mean a, an anarchist-minded person will always make the statist scream louder. <laughs> it's, it's a gift. Uh, hold on, my dog wants to be um, set. Ah, I'm. thank you for your patience. <laughs> mm. Hey, Vinny's listening at least. Uh, thanks, Vinny. I I don't really uh I don't do so well alone as I do with somebody else to bounce shit off of because I I lose my train of thought, keep talking on the pipe, and <laughs> just hope for the best in the long run. But anyway, I started out talking about the different forms of energy that we need to you know to drive us that fuel us because. Energy is, it's a staple. You can't survive without it. So to use what you have, you've always got to have fuel to sustain you. I, I don't even know how to, how to explain it to somebody else the way, it, uh, the way it comes across to me. But I, I did last time compare it to a motor, you know, a car engine, something that people can put their hands on and, and physically understand, you know, or, we're like um like Larry Woods would explain it he says that the heat that the energy source creates is actually waste and the reason it's hot is that i guess in the way i understood it is the reason it's hot is to let you know there's something fucking wrong here so that you could repair it and put it into the state it needs to be in but we don't have that information readily available to all of us. Uh, I won't spill the coffee because I have tea, Cabo Tech. Cirque's, Cirque's running a little behind. She had to go f play grown up into the city and uh, find out if she wanted to change her, her financial thing. And I don't think she's going to do it. Uh, she texted, you know, she Skyped me and said she's not going to do it. So, eh. So all that um, chitter-chatter people do about changing shit when change comes, it, it comes hard to some people, you know, and Cirque's been where she's at, she's comfortable, and she's got family that works there and all that. So I didn't really think she'd really want to move on and do anything else, but I just kept my mouth shut and let her go off and play grown up and find out what she wanted, because that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, what, what I could have done is horrible you know intervened and told her hey they do this and hey do that and 
all I said was, <laughs> have fun, because I don't want to get involved in it. It's not my business. And I've had friends that broke up marriages over financial problems and money and jobs and all the trouble that uh, jobs cre create in your personal life, too. Uh, people don't spend a lot of time thinking about all that uh, because they're too busy working and they're too busy traveling and they're too busy taking care of shit to think about the shit that they need to think about. So what happened is, I think we got the internet so the the ones that know could gather. And there's lots of little groups everywhere. And the smaller the group, people get to know each other, you know. It's like, yeah, that's why all the problems you have with Facebook and Twitter and all, all that egocentric driven dig me, I'm cool. You had a president that tweets like a 15 year old fucking girl. I mean, it is, it's childish. When I was a child, I thought the president was a big thing. And here I am a grown man and I think the president is a, it's a butt line, it's, it's the punchline to a joke. And I know that it's not it's not a popular way to present yourself on matters of you know state and all that horseshit but you know people don't want to know what you know they want you to agree with what they know <laughs> and i don't know anything all i know is whatever the hell we're doing it's not working worth a fuck and there are people that have explained why that is Unfortunately, the Teslas in the world that we live in get buried under products that make profits for, you know, people that have property and resources. So somehow or another, the whole planet got sucked into this greed and uh, envy and shortage game that we play. Uh, you know, the planned obsolescence. It's right in front of your face. Everybody sees it. Everybody knows it's there. What do we do to change it? I, keep, I mean, with my audience, I think I've hit like 50, sometimes over on, uh, somewhere between 20 and 50 over on BitChute. I like BitChute a lot, too. It's very entertaining. I get my, uh, my morning kick with these people in, Vegas that walk their dogs and chitter chatter about the news. They're more right than left. And then lately, the the girl she's been going a little bit um, happy because the left is so ignorant and the right is so I don't know how how I interpret it from her is they're bad but they're not as bad. So the lesser of two evils thing. But they got these the this big red dog and they got a big red cat so i got, i watched the damn video to see what the dogs the dogs throwing uh, they're chasing the ball <laughs> it's just old guy shit i guess it, i'm easily amused in my old age but maybe it's the result of all the fluoride i've drank all these years you know and the fluoride and all the products that i've consumed have dulled my freaking third eye and it's irreparable I don't think there's anything that can be done to fix the damage that was done. But it can be slowed down, maybe maintained, you know. So I won't ever get, um, hmm. I don't know, I guess age just makes you break down. But it seems to me that the older I get and the more maintenance I pay attention to, <laughs> the better I feel in the in the long run. So I don't know if, if whatever I'm doing is... is uh, I don't know how to judge it by an age, but that's how society works. You know, they see the gray hair and, <laughs> and uh, that right there. It's not a youthful sign <laughs> when, you, when your beard is gray. So, But then again, I guess there's foods I could eat that would change the fucking color of my hair if I wanted to be vain. <laughs> ah, scared off, Don. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything exciting to talk about. Yeah, we'll keep going. Anyway, you know, if you listen to um, people on the RLM, like Mary, Mary does her show, and Grim and Moose, they do a show on Friday, you'll find that they talk about the same stuff, different ways. Uh, 
I I'm always easily amused. That's what I do. You know. Anyway, where was I? So we're at this uh, place in time where, because everything comes to you quickly, people have confused that with being intelligent. I know how to get an answer from a machine. Ooh, look at how smart I am. The problem with that is that the answers that you get are not true. They're just more bullshit for you to go out and repeat so that more dummies will go out and repeat. You know, rinse, wash, rinse, repeat. That's what we do. We're people. When you have societies that are this big, it seems it's... They get out of control. You know, the people that run shit, they don't they don't want us doing anything that they don't want us to do. Like it's getting to the point where growing vegetables is against the law. There was a woman a few years back in um Oklahoma, I think Oklahoma City or Tulsa. She had a big old garden and it was all over the front yard and the backyard and the somebody complained about it to the city and the city called it a an eyesore, basically, because it wasn't trimmed and blah, 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 blah. So they tore it all up, and she was growing vegetables for herbs and, and vegetables for to eat that were keeping her healthy, or so she says. And But the system is so big now, it can just destroy you, no matter who you are. And they go, oh, but look at George Soros. Eh. Anybody here know George Soros? I know the name. I've seen links. I've seen pictures. I've read a few things, but I don't know the guy. So, hmm. somebody was talking Friday. You know, I was listening to the uh, to the Freakers about I don't know a little bit back, and I keep keep hearing about how you know if if you're alive, this is how we look at life. If you're alive, you're involved in this game that we play. And if you dare to, to not verbally participate in accepting it, then other people get uh, they get pissed, I guess is the right word for it. But they, they do the job of bringing you back to reality to let you know that no matter where you think you stand in this life, that you too are just as responsible. And... I don't I don't know if I agree with that because to break away from it as much as I have is it's it's like walking on a razor's edge. You don't know what's going to happen next. Because people and you know people have these opinions and and they do shit behind your back and they call the this and they interrupt with the that. So, you know, it's either live in paranoia and fear of what other kind of shit people are just going to throw at you to try to cause you a problem or sit quietly and don't say anything to anyone. I choose the fur. I'm going to throw the shit at the wall and see what happens. You know, that's just the way I do. Hey, Cowboy Tech. It's always good to see you. I've, you know, I've, I'm always happy. And your link's still number one with me. You, you stay on top of the more important stuff. And you stay away from the gossip and the bullshit. And as you all know out there in radio land, staying away from the bullshit is very difficult. Because it's all written to get to a point in your brain that's been polished, so to speak, to receive it. And that's what information does. You know, you receive information. Well, some people don't seem to have the ability to either reject the bullshit or listen to both sides of the story. Some people just think, yeah, well, that works here, so okay, it's good enough for me. Mm, nah. So I think the best thing I could have done was to just stay un, you know, unconnected physically from all that crap. But the electronic world made it so that I could still communicate. And I'm going to still stand by my dork table theory that 
communication is probably 90% of the problem because we're doing it wrong. <laughs> I, was, I was listening to some David Icke stuff today while I was breaking in my new puzzle. And it was amazing how much of the stuff the guy said. I I agree with him. And he's not he's not real pop. I guess on the internet world, he's he's pretty popular. A lot of people know who he is. But I don't know how many people that out of the ones that listen to him truly understand his you know his version of what he's seeing because that's what this all is. I see it my way. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You see it your way. The dog lays there and, you know, begs for something until you it gives up and goes away. Or you give it what it wants. And that's how I look at government. Government is a beggar on my doorstep wanting something from me. Because I don't want anything that government offers to me. Nothing. I want them to leave me a low no. And for whatever reason, something about being alive and having a birth certificate... And a passport and speaking English, all these things that work for me also in some other ways work against me because I don't want to use them. But you can't get anywhere in life unless you do. So, you know, we're all trapped. That's the prison I talk about. That paper prison, you know, where if you don't produce the documents... Yeah, they're going to put handcuffs on you and find out what you're doing and all that kind of crap. So what I did was I moved to a place where they're looking for people that did something, not just stopping everybody at random to see what they can catch. They don't even do that in Copenhagen. Well, I guess on the train stations, the traveling and shit like that, they get a little sneakier, but... I don't do anything any fucking way, but it's the intrusion of armed assholes harassing me to travel. I don't like it. But there are many people in the world, for some reason, and I'll bet a lot of them don't even fly, that insist that when you're flying, that some stranger... You know, gives you a colonoscopy and makes sure you don't have shit in your boots so you don't blow up at the plane. You know, where where did we get... I thought we had representation. Okay, representation was hijacked and now these idiots, they call themselves leaders. Other people call them leaders. I've called them leaders, but I won't follow them anywhere. <clears throat> Now, coming up to the end of my life, da da da, I mean, I'm 59 years old. Right about art's age. And the only difference that I can find between me and art, period, is that I'll, I'm willing to listen to the other side. You know, as long as they're reasonable, they don't need to um, browbeat me with superiority if they just explain themselves like. A normal human being, uh, they're easier to tolerate because I think the voters, besides being afraid of each other, what, what they're they're worried about a world that's that's not in order. But they don't seem to realize this: the world is not in order. The world is a chaotic fucking nightmare because of all this greed and I want my shoes made in this country and I want my pants made in that country and I want to eat something exotic from Saudi Arabia. So all these things that the wealthier of us do fuck it up for everybody else. Really bad. Of course, we live in a in a debt-based economy where everybody's worried about a collapse all the fucking time like it's going to be the end of the damn world. But they don't do anything to stop it. That's my personal beef with your voters and your laws and your rights and your rituals and your dancing around. Nine fucking relics dancing around a skull, you know. And in case you didn't know, I think five out of the nine Supreme Court justices are Jews. So they got... Um, dual citizenship between the United States of America and Israel. Mm. Now that strikes me as a scam. I think we're being had. I resent that 
these people can do whatever they damn please. They're above the law. They hold America hostage because America's kissing their ass just like everybody else does. The Russians did it a couple of weeks ago with that plane they shot down. They even had a an explanation for why it happened. And Wait a minute. The Jews said, we're going to bomb this place a minute before they did it. And that was like, cool, all right, everybody's cool. Fifteen dead, Not no, no threats, no warnings, no, no nothing. So what that tells me is we're all being sp- we're all being lied to about shit, everything. Not just one thing. You, if you can isolate one thing, then what's the difference if any of the rest of it's true? And I'm going to pick on medicine and religion and politics every chance I get. Because if you can't see the results are negative, you're not paying attention. And I don't mind that so much, but you know, fluoride in the water, this is political decisions made, you know, up through banking and corporations that own the color blue make these fucking decisions and then they pay these elected officials to write a law to suit their crime. And then they go and do it. And you, there's no recourse. You can't sue them. You can't. You, the only recourse is violence and they got they got us all down to either old age or pussy, one or the other, you know. At at 59, I'm not, I wasn't much of a threat because of my size when I was younger, but I would hold my own, so that was one thing. But now, crying out loud, I can't imagine fighting for a cause at this point in my life. Nothing interests me. What What cause? Women's rights? Fuck rights, period. Why don't you guys just get over your fucking rights altogether? Every time you hear about it, right, it's just some special little bitch sniveling about what they don't get. Well, you know, life <laughs> life was never supposed to be easy. It was supposed to be comfortable. And they took away all the necessary things for it to be comfortable. So if it was easy, we wouldn't know it if it was. And it worked. 21st century, and the best we have is Donald Trump. Donald fucking Trump. I don't even know who the Danish, um, what you call it is, I guess, prime minister. They had a nice looking blonde here when I, when I showed up. No, that was the one before. That was the Obama series. Or did I come? I haven't even, yeah, when I got here, I, Obama was in, uh, in when I was in Scotland, Obama was the president. And there was a blonde, uh, prime minister of Denmark and, <laughs> taking the old Negro's attention away from his wife. They put it on the newspapers and TV for all of us to see. That black man was drooling all over the white girl, by God and country. But it's okay. It's Obama. That's the way I remember it. I wasn't impressed one way or the other. But, hey, at least the dance, if you're going to tie people up, do it with the rope. You know, you don't need to break out the barbed wire. And besides, I'm, I work on my prison. <laughs> it's it's not, you know, a ramshackle hole. Jeez, Louise. Hey, they're making posts on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Anyway, yeah, if you're over at BitChute and you catch this show, and you got a... Uh, a hankering for old school typing in a chat room. We have a selection of people to play with with your computer. I'm telling you, you could get into anything from a conversation to an argument about sex bots in the RLM chat. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is put it in the put it in your your thing in your box. Type it in. And then you go to the room and they ask you for a name. You can make up some goofy name. You could be guessing 707, whatever. And uh, the chatters go, <laughs> the chatters get fun sometimes. Let's just say that. But my favorite part of the whole week is still that damn trivia game. But fucking fingers, I swear, fingers, old Grimner fingers, Moose Girl, Miss Kate. 
Um, there's a few people right there that can type. So uh, they're hard to beat. But I keep trying. Hey, Chloe's going with a golf ball, a glowing white golf ball. Wow. No, she's calling the thing the guy's got in his hand a glowing white golf ball. Is it prescription medication? Only Rain Man would know. So, anyway, here we sit, all confused. There's 7,000 or some, I read, okay. <laughs> I'm reading about the the southern invasion from uh, I don't know what country is it Guatemala or some Allah fucking country down in Central America where you know there's there's no future for these people so what the billionaires do is they give the people a couple of dollars and say hey and give you this money if you go north. <laughs> Instead of having what's his name Soros Stein, you know, buy up all the land, build some shit, make some places for these people to survive. Nah, they give them a couple hundred bucks a piece and tell them go to America. <laughs> uh, a fish hook goes on the end of a leader. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm I me me and you hold that opinion, but not. There, there's a lot of resistance to it, you know, but still they, they went from representative and then on you, you spend a few years and, and all of a sudden they're your leaders. Wait a minute. I don't want anybody leading me any damn where if, if I followed them, I'd be drinking the damn, um, fluoride, eating the GMOs, you know, enjoy, put the pipe down, step away from that horrible cannabis, the only kind that's good for you is the kind the government approves and grows. And if you don't see the trap in that, wow. Hmm. I saw that coming when I started hearing about legalizing way, 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 way. No, I kept saying it wrong. But the point still remains to me is if you don't prohibit this fucking weed in the first place, just turn your back on it. It's over. And just prosecute people that break laws that are you know already exist but not based on weed <laughs> then everybody would be happy but no you can only own 27 grams but i want to buy a full ounce but you can't because if you do you're breaking the law well what okay so now there's another game for people in weights and measures to play is you charge for a full ounce but you only put out 27 grams <laughs> it's, oh, wow every time you get this government or state or whatever it is involved in commerce the people that get screwed are the ones using whatever the product is and they either get screwed through its garbage or they get through get screwed through pricing so you don't have to settle for garbage. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Let's not live in the deceit world that we've created and all these problems would just magically go away. I mean, if they just started fresh with a pen and wrote down the 10 laws that they needed to run the whole fucking thing and just keep it simple, we wouldn't have all this problem right now. But because we're so easily led and so gullible and people do shit behind your back and they tell you one thing to your face in government, but when you read the newspaper or you watch the television set, why, it says something else. What was really bad for you, Federal Reserve Bank, is suddenly the next best thing that anybody could do. And we all know the truth about that, right? Rob, Grim, Chloe, Vinny. Cabotech. Well, you guys know. Some of you know. Some of you may not know. I don't know. I think I know. But I don't really care. I believe that I don't care idea is how I separate myself from the rest of the herd is I don't have any particular loyalties to entity or names or titles or anything like that. But if I'm connected to it personally, then it's a different story. Now, the only reason the law is involved in my personal life 
at the moment is because I'm visiting in a, another country that I'm not from. So it brings up all that state crap that I really don't like. But see, doing it shows you it can be done if you do it the way they want you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> easily led old Vincent came in. He finally caught it. Um, never to, You're like a hurricane. Never... Never let a chance to say easily go by more than once. Anyway, but uh, Christ, Vinny, you, you got me off my, you got me off my rant, lost my mind, have to think of something new and exciting to tell the world all about. But, you know, with all this drama going on, you've got midterm elections and you got invasions from the underworld and you got problems on the motherland and everybody's fighting with everybody so if that's the result of the game you're playing maybe you either need to change your tactics or abandon that game and start something different but i can't seem to get a lot of people to go along with my idea because they're addicted to today <laughs> We want instant every fucking thing. I do because I'm spoiled by it. I've had it for a long time. So, but then again, I grew up in a time without it. So I might have an advantage on this electronic crap. Should it, should it vanish, disappear, get stolen, hijacked, whatever the, the state may have in store for us in the future. Uh, I plan to survive it one way or the other. But it is obvious to me, for crying out loud, how spoiled I am by being able to click a button and know what the temperature is and uh, click a button and find out what happened on this particular date and whatever year I want to look for or even particular ideas. This wacko talks about this and that wacko talks about that. and You know the name, you type it in the box and boom. Now, what I've learned over the time is that all the information you get back may not be true. Now, how in the world, in my limited abilities, am I ever going to wade through all the crap that the electronic world offers and shoves in my face constantly? I'm going to survive that and come out of it well, unscathed, I guess is what I'm looking for. You know, um, I don't want to be have my ass whipped by society that's not my goal i don't want to be worked to death or used oh i hate that when people think that they're using you for something like being in the military some some other idiot screaming at you to go do something because he told you to and the only reason you're doing what he said is because he told you to. And, of course, that's backed by threat of violence or jail. So, you know, it's not like you're doing anything you want to do. It's doing what you're told to do. Hmm. I don't see myself living like that very long. Maybe a minute and then, nah, I'm out of here. So, fortune being what fortune is with me, it kept me away from that kind of life. Because I couldn't have tolerated it. Hmm. I know. Vinny get along easily with everyone. Yeah, no. He, he, he spins off his own name, cowboy. It's just... It's like... Vinny is like the positive side of Hansel. You know? If you don't talk to Hansel, he'll, cl he'll just keep putting Fox links up until you just can't stand it anymore and block him. <laughs> That's what I do. I, I don't know. Some people, I guess they tolerate it. I guess there's people that tolerate me because they don't agree with my verbiage, you know, my perspective of this mess we call society. And it is a clusterfuck. Wow. I, I don't want to play. But my wife does. She's, <laughs> my wife is handling playing the game very well. Now, me, I don't know. My game is way different than she interacts with people, and I would 
sell a product or a service, not interact. Interacting wasn't my thing at the last few years. Was make a deal. It takes a few minutes. Boom, you're done. Not ten hours of work to accomplish. Nah, that's that's not the Jewish way. That's not how the Jews do it. You know, we're uh, we're like um, we're immune to um, labor. We don't like to be physically used. I wonder what that's about. It's probably from those slave camps in the in the forties in Poland. Hmm. Who'd know? And yeah, you know, it's not like <laughs> it's it's not like they massacred them. It, the story was so fucked over. It's a shame that uh, you get out of it is you get Jews fighting Nazis. But the reality of it is so different. That's just the face that we were shown when the reality of it is there's people behind everything else. Anything that grows and makes money has these other people that leech off it. And what these fuckers did was they convinced countries to allow them to sell them currency with interest instead of the country just making their own in their own paper with no interest these greedy fucking people found a way to you know to get a little icing off that cake and they sold us out long ago and it wasn't just 1913 they did it before that i think 1913 was the third attempt to install the fractional reserve banking system into our fucking financial lives and screw us every day. But here we are. And, you know, people get up there and they go, uh, repeal the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, why? What? What's that going to do besides complicate shit so much with legal s lawsuits and See, they're just setting the they're setting the trap one more time for the big shit. Because if you're dealing with a big world, then you don't have time to deal with your own world. And outside of the radio, my world is very small, very quiet. My dog and me, you know, when the circ's gone and uh, the electronic shit to play with to keep my mind busy. But I do artistic stuff that. Mm, Maybe maybe in a few more years I'll lose the interest in, but eh, I'm still you know, I'm still interested in shit at, at this point in time in this age. So I guess I'm doing better than some, you know. My dreams aren't future. My dream is to make it through the show and have a meal and go to bed tonight. And there you go. That's as far as I I managed to get with that thought. Uh, but I did three things, so hey. Maybe I'm improving. Could be. Let me check Skype and see if my wife's due home anytime soon. Well, probably another hour. By the time I'm done with my radio podcast, the babe will be walking up. Wait, I hear her now. Never mind. She made it faster than I thought. Anyway, that was an in a perfect world um, moment. I don't know. Hey, there you go. In a perfect world, we would have the Larry Woods 54 cycle generator to operate our lives on. And if I could figure out a way, maybe I could get with Rob Works more on a personal level and take a few hours, you know, and have him teach me some basic shit that I could learn so that I could get a generator and recalibrate it to 54 cycles i don't think it would be that difficult if i had the you know some help from an, somebody with experience but i'm not probably going to ever sit down and just do it by myself now those kind of things in my uh the way i work and the way i think i need a partner for something else for something that's you know that big it's not going to the store and deciding what's going to have for dinner you know making this generator because i've been thinking about it for quite a few years now but i'm not uh, i i'm not set up with uh tools and and knowledge so i'd have to go out of my way and pursue this 
it, to make it happen. It's not going to fall into my face, you know. I'm not going to walk into it outside in the yard one day. This is one of those things that, like Cirque, I had to make a decision and go after and do all the things necessary to see if it was something I wanted to do. Just going to do it with a generator instead of a woman this time. And uh, I'm going to get, but like last time, I had, you know, help from people to, to talk to me about what I'm doing with my life so I could, you know, make a decision that wasn't completely insane. Because it sure sounded crazy at the time, but as it worked out, it was probably the sanest um, sanest thing I could have done considering the the living situation I was in in the first place because I'd outlived my usefulness where I was and it was time for me to move on <laughs> and then boom there's there's somebody that that uh, uh, brought that out you know it made it more interesting to pursue that instead of just maintaining my ill mom but anyway in a perfect world, I think I've always got, whatever I've got is as close to perfect as I'm looking for. I don't think perfect exists. You know, it, I think it's a, a perspective. You know, you can, you can bend a word here and there to suit yourself, I guess, if you want to. Everybody does it. I do it. If you don't do it, then maybe you should try it. Take a word, any word. <laughs> like Vinny's uh, loves his last name. You know, me, I like boobs. I think the the world boobs made the world balance the world. If you got a problem, <coughs> boobs. Ah, Java Doctor and Don C or whoops, D underscore C. Black Ops operator comes forward and tells all. Cody Snodgrass. One hour, four minutes. Uh, it's called the X-22 Report Spotlight. They wrote it up there in the Real Liberty Media dot chat. Dot com chat. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I need to do the 420 report because I don't really care. Boy, Vinny drives me nuts with that 420. I don't care if it's 420, 650, 319. If I want to light up, I'm going to light up. I don't need an excuse or a reason. Uh. I don't need a holiday. In fact, the less I'm used to the opposite of, you know, the less attention you, you make of what you're doing, the more shit you can smoke. I'm Jewish too. Besides being a weed ed, I mean, I share my pot. That's just what we do, but I'm still Jewish and I still want more than you get. <laughs> Some things are situationally perfect. Flash somebody says Grimnir. Well, you know what? That's what I mean. It's all a matter of how you look at it. it. It's up to you. It's the you being the person doing it. You know, I say you. I write I, I get called an egomaniac. I say you, I get called <laughs> an egomaniac. So it's a it's a lose-lose thing. It's this fucking language that we've... We don't know what we're doing with this language. I'm pretty sure of that. I can't... I don't know how to prove it. Outside of recommending that people talk to people like Mary. Mary knows a shit with words. Who else? Uh, Vincent. Vincent's not quite the wordsmith. He's working on it. But he knows. You know, he knows some of the basic stuff. I don't I don't know how to repeat it all. Uh, I don't do verbatim worth of shit. I screw up names and dates. and But I usually... <laughs> I don't need... St- Structure structure needs me, Vinny. That's why they're always trying to kidnap me and take me back into the herd. That's why the opposition from the voter. Because, hey, you can't say that. That doesn't... Right, 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 right. No, that's the problem is that you have a belief system that restricts what other people say. Fuck what... I don't give a fuck what you say. What you say is your business. How I hear it. Now that's where the that's where the game starts. Is it's not from the person speaking; it's from the person listening. I I I got this idea from Mary, and I think she explains it in a far different way. But you know what Mary says, you'll hear it the way you hear it, and of course I'll hear it the way I hear it. Now on top of that, there's that 
added extra when you you personally spend a lot of time talking to somebody so you you build up a rapport and you have some experience with them it gives you a different insight to what they're saying and i don't think as people we're geared up to handle too many other folks in in you know putting that much information into us because of the way we're taught to absorb knowledge through the school system and I'm probably not explaining it very well. I have not approached this topic before I can remember in the sense I'm trying to now. But, you know, repetition starts way back before you're capable of speaking. You know, you're hearing it as you're forming and you're growing. The first two years, you're like a sponge sucking up all this valuable knowledge and information. And then after that, they spend five years waiting to to destroy it because you got a birth certificate now if you didn't have a birth certificate i don't know anybody personally that doesn't but i've i've uh i assume there are places in the world that don't keep written record maybe they you know got a tree and they scratch it or something but you know they're not online <laughs> they're maybe they're living in a jungle somewhere a group of pygmies in africa and their bloodline carries on, but there's no paper trail to follow back. So here we've got this internet thing where people believe whatever they see. That is the enemy of the internet. Is just because you see it don't mean it's true. Well, here we are. We're all looking at the same thing, exactly like this thing was designed to do. And we're all seeing something different. But we don't know how to explain you know, to verbally express it without jumping all over each other is pretty difficult. Hey, Anti just showed up into the reallibertymedia.com chat room. He doesn't uh, he doesn't plug into the shows, so I'm not uh, I'm not too concerned about numbers on this one way or the other. It was more about getting the opportunity to speak my crazy old mind and say it out loud and. And oddly enough, it kind of surprises me sometimes that other people do agree with foundations that I've got. And we're going to go for a read time in the real liberty while I smoke my pipe load. I'm going to stall like a banshee. And I'm still, why do I need structure? Who in the hell are you, um, Grim? Vinny. Sorry, Grim. <coughs> Excuse me. But who the hell are you to tell me I need structure? <laughs> See, and Moose Girl, I don't need a reason to light up. Either do I. But, the, you know, Vinny likes to do things in unison. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm just picking on him because he's not here. And we have this wonderful thing in life, right? And that wonderful thing is called each other. And we're not taught to interact in ways that bring the best out of others. Some people, I don't know, some people just, um, they're very negative, you know. And its I'm sure there's folks out there in radio land that have heard this crap that probably consider me to be negative when I don't think I'm negative at all. Why, if anything... I think I have a pretty damn positive perspective because understanding f at the um, the level of energy and the kind of food and the kind of water and all weighing all all these mathematical fucking things it does give you an advantage but to another guy you sound like a lunatic because that's the design of the game that we're in you know Hey, are you listening, cowboy? Mm, 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 mm. Let's see. Oh, wow. Thank you, CT. I was just now typing to Jay Grady on YouTube. Wow. Come again. Wow. I don't even understand the chat. It's too much to talk and read at the same time. I'll drive myself insane. Oh, Miss Kate has a lap dog, a sipo high anxiety border, and an arrogant vain beautiful collie. Which do you prefer? I like them all. You know, every dog's got his place. You know, 
that's what makes the dog world so interesting is that they all got their own damn personality you know and a lot of them geez when i go for walks it's not like i see a lot of the same dogs there's a very uh, scattered variety there's always different animals to see and i really like that and when the dogs pass each other depending on the on the the human connected to the per to the dog is the behavior of the dog, and you have some dogs that are yappy and get in everybody's face, and you got some dogs that are just calm and just stroll along, mind their business. Hey, pee on a lamppost. Look at me, I'm cool. And uh, <laughs> okay, cowboy, I wasn't sure, uh, <laughs> but I was just running on a rant about about the dogs. Ah, there's Hannah saying hello to the neighborhood. And in a perfect world, we have dogs to play with, don't we? I think that kind of helps make Cirque's world more perfect, is to have the dog. Um, she's pleased that she got her. Hannah is a f lovable mess, is what Hannibal is. And, uh, oh, I've got a weird story for you folks. I did something lame and left something in my pocket and... My wife did the laundry and whatever was in my pocket did something and it got loose and it made the machine act all crazy, do weird shit. So uh, we had to get the machine looked at because see how badly I broke it. So the guy comes over Monday and the strange part about it wasn't having the machine worked on. It was Hannibal sat in the living room from the moment the guy came till the moment he left and she was not agitated or jumpy or jumping around she went out there she smelled him and she turned around and came back and sat for almost an hour and i don't get it but i thought i was more nervous i would make the dog more nervous because the guy is he's danish and he's working on a thing i don't understand too much about in the first place thanks sweetie and yeah, I'm doing a solo over here with myself. Rob Rob had to go to Austin. I don't know. Anyway, I was just telling my wife, you well, you heard my side of it anyway. But I'm in my perfect world over here with the dogs and the wife. and We even have a cat. So people that like animals tend to, uh, I think they... We tend to live longer because you got to, you know, slave for these fucking animals. Flash somebody. This is from Grimnir. Tell Cirque not to feel bad, feel so bad about her fingers could be worse when you broke your hand. Well, I was saying on the air, the medical is not, there's no service fee for medical here for the people that are Danes, right? Just for the medications. But the going to the doctor part that she pays all that through her tax structure so she's covered for everything but not for medications yes yeah, so, and that's even see she says some of certain medications so yeah but because she's a tax paying dane and if you're going to play a game i think those are the results that you're looking to get so that's why that's why she's happy all the time is she's not uh, doing uh, yeah well she, because she's not doing stuff because she has to she does stuff because it works and I just call it prison period because she works but that's <laughs> we have that well if you don't work how do you get money crap comes up and People have been browbeaten into thinking the only way to trade is through cash. Oh, there's even barter clubs. But the funny thing about them when I was looking at them in the 90s was they had a, a, a cash. They wanted a cash investment to join for administration costs because paper, you know, paper and people's hours would cost money. That's so even when you go to bartering shit, you still dragging along the damn fiat currencies in some areas and for some this or some that because the state has got to get its greasy gimme 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 paws all over it.
you know. Mm. And I don't know where people get off. You know, if you make what I I'll think of a high. Let's say a high. You, not even high, but I'll say like if you made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, okay, your tax bracket would be what about fifteen percent? I mean, they say thirty five, but you can write shit off that you don't do. So, you know, the game's written with loopholes in it if you know how to read their crap and evade this by claiming that. It's it's a scam. It's, it's the most Jewish thing I ever saw in my life. Mm. Bet, against your, bet against yourself, and should you be correct and get hurt, we're going to give you money. But here, what ha this is the best part about it is there's been fraudulent claims made over the time they've been doing this crap because it became a, a for profit business. So people saw, hey, I can steal a little bit now. Watch this. Mm. And what started out as once a good idea insuring something for a fire became. He didn't wear his safety belt when he was hit by the truck at 180 miles an hour. It's his fault because he didn't wear his safety belt. And you can convince people of that. Well, if, if he would have wore that safety belt, he would have probably survived. Yeah, in a jar, maybe in a laboratory connected to a machine. <laughs> but legally, <laughs> I, this crap makes me laugh out loud, I swear. Uh. Oh, yeah. Cirque was lucky, I know, man. Because dogs, animals, anything. I walk into things occasionally, maybe once a year or so, but I've bumped into a doorway or, uh, or, well, let's not go there. But, yeah, or misjudge the staircase because I'm so short, I'm not used to seeing stair stairs like this in my... Yeah, but now I lived here so long, I know they're there. But the first couple of, hey, get that stare out of my eye. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm. Hey, you know what I want us to know is, let me ask old Moose Girl if she's taken a uh, gotten another dog to look at yet. Because I didn't think she's got another one. I heard, she, I heard you on the Freakers say that. Uh, the dog barked at you, didn't care for the, that didn't work out. There was no love. But did you ever find another one? Or are you still looking? Because I'm a dog kind of guy. That's what I do. Eh. My dog's over there just sitting there staring at me like i am lost my mind. Mm. But now the wife's home. So the energy level around here will pick up a little bit. And I need to try to figure out what to do with the rest of the show. Hmm. Let me think, because Moose Girl's playing music and whatnot, and that's all sweet and dandy, but I can't listen to music and do the show at the same time. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> uh, maybe she's not. Maybe it's a link or something. I was trying to be amusing. And sometimes, you know, when you try to be a fucking smarty clown guy, sometimes you fall on your teeth. That's the nature of being funny. Not everything comes out the way I thought it would. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, soon. Maybe there's a dog in your future for the winter. Yeah, still on the hunt. Yeah. Maybe, it, you know, you'll see that one dog because that's what you need. You see, you'll know when you see it. You go, ah, that's the one I got to have it. Or the dog will pick you and it'll come to you and go, hey, human, take me home. I need, I need treats. <laughs> Cirque said we could clone Hannah, but that would be a clone, and that's going way Frankenstein for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Cirque thinks a, a, a Hannibal kind of dog would, would suit you pretty good. She's about, what, I don't know, 20, 15 or 20 pounds. She's not that big of a dog. Seven, what, what, maybe more. 17 kilos? How much did. 17. Yeah, whoa. No, that's about 35. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know. She don't feel or look that big to me. I'm still, I'm still a human. So to her, I'm a giant. But anyway, but in a perfect world, we wouldn't have leaders. We wouldn't have representation. We would have uh, logic and reason. 
You know, when they killed Tesla and shoved him into the obscure and brought out Edison and made him a big old fucking hero, they screwed the rest of us really well. And once they screwed us, then they put a meter on it, and then they served up the absolute shittiest possible uh, supply of electricity they could muster. And now they've got the world convinced that there's a shortage of this and a shortage of that. Conserve, conserve. And Tesla wanted to give energy as a gift to everybody equally. And that's not what the five families want. No, 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 no. I don't think there's any more than it's probably a really small thing. Whatever's behind all this crap we're doing, you know, the poisons and the experimenting on us. Nuclear. There you go. If we got a nuclear bomb in every nuclear facility sitting wherever every nuclear facility is sitting. <laughs> nuclear bomb, people. And there's what hundreds of them, if not thousands, thousands of them probably by now. And shit. There's another thing. I was against it when I was down. At Pirates Cove, and uh, St. Louis, Bispo, California. They had a they had a nuclear plant up on the hill, but we wanted to go to the beach anyway. But still, we didn't want that nuclear plant there. the The grown ups did. And it seems to me that there's this magic thing that happens to people is they become grown ups, and all of a sudden they don't give a shit about anybody but their self. I don't know how that works. It didn't work for me that way. I would probably be uh, wealthy beyond my wildest if I had to put my uh, attention in that direction. Mm. But instead, I just settled for comfortable. And uh, comfortable to me is, I don't know, compared to the guy that shits on the street in San Francisco, is probably living really well. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) Mm. Got homeless in America. Okay. Homeless in America. The land of the free, home of the brave. (laughs) But the people that live there as a collective can't figure out that the people that they get selected to operate their shit are, they're moving all the jobs out, (laughs) for one. There ain't no work left. Um, The economy is designed to make it so that you can't afford to do shit unless you're in the game. Lovely game by the way. Really, really mean that. Oh, oh, I mean that a lot. Hey, Hannibal's. Come on, calm down, you. Hey, the cat is enjoying the show. Well, that's good. I appreciate that because, you know, animals, they pick up on your tone and shit, you know. I think people pick up on your tone sometimes, but not always. You can sneak a few things in if you're clever about it, you know. <laughs> typing oy vey don't don't type at me man you turn turn on your cap lock and you're yelling at me I mean where did that come from I've actually seen people get upset because somebody put their cap yeah well that's wonderful you your yelling in the background is really helping her yelling in the foreground that's what I do when people yell I no. Stop it. My wife has me under assault here, and she and she's rolling. So I'm not only am I uh, I'm falling victim, but she's got the better hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been playing cards a long time. Believe me, I know I lost this hand. So back to the radio I go. <laughs> Yeah, not a particular dwelling place. I don't know anti. I I'm not that familiar with um, all. Everybody's got different histories. You know, we all come from different stuff. No matter if you think you come from the same place, there's so many things that are different that you don't. You know, just just my my mom being not a, being American in the neighborhood I grew up in was odd. In the the years where I was developing till I was about. No. She's 14, 15. Uh, foreigners, no, that wasn't, that was Chinese people or Vietnamese people or something like that. But an English white woman without an accent didn't, she didn't uh, seem English to people because of 
her, she lost her accent because of her age moving over to the states. Very strange, you know. But just her thinking process was enough for people to um, kind of uh, how do you put it? Uh, because of what my mom and dad did teach me to read and write before I went to school really messed me up at school. I didn't. It, they weren't happy to have me in their school. So it wasn't pleasant for ever <laughs> really pleasant. School was just a drag from the minute I got there and to the minute I decided not to go back. And even as an adult, I went back to school. Um, I was about 30 or something. And the Internet wasn't really interesting to me, but computers were. So I thought, well, I'm going to take a few dollars and go down to the community college and I'm going to take some computer classes. And that didn't last, I don't know, three or four nights. And they, they asked me to, to stop coming because I was unteachable. I just just couldn't, whatever the hell this computer thing is, just wasn't, wasn't clicking with me. I looked like a complete monkey. So, but I was still interested, but a little disappointed. So I left their school. And I called my father and I told him about my situation. I said, hey, do this. And, and he did. And he got me a, he got me a computer. I think it was 1990, I don't know, 92 or 93. And, uh, to get me started. And it did. And I learned how to, to use my own. And, and those days things were real, uh, technical and, they would send out a machine that was still, all the bugs hadn't been worked out of the computers we were using from that company is what I'm trying to say, but they had tech support. So a part would go bad or something wasn't correct. They'd talk you through taking it apart on the phone. And I'd do that and send it to them and they'd send me back the other one and I'd put it in and boom, that solved the problem. So as the company was developing, they were doing enough tech support to keep you going and not lose you as a future customer because, you know, obsolescence in computer world was, well, that was coming. <laughs> I didn't know it when I started, but it didn't take me long to figure it out. But what I started out doing it for was to uh, make advertising for my, uh, at the time, my wife's business. And it actually worked. So the things that I've... Uh, I've attempted to do through the internet. They've all been successful. I haven't failed at anything I've attempted. I'm just not good at operating the machine. So my interests are kind of limited. I need to, like, uh, when I thought about asking Rob to help me with this generator concept, I need to know somebody that can sit down and take a few minutes and slow down. I think Rob would be the perfect guy to do it because he wouldn't be rushing me. Like, if I was teaching him... I'd be like, well, you get it yet? Are we done? Can I get it? I'm charging by the hour, Rob. <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding about that. But I am a little bit more impatient than Rob. <clears throat> so that kind of input will probably be, if I can talk him into doing it, is what's going to make what I want to do successful. Lead me down the right road to find the right, you know, the right links and the right this and the right that to put the components together and come out with a finished product that will serve my purpose. And I'm a late bloomer on this one because I've uh, dabbled in electrical work, you know, doing small things, but never really got into the dynamics behind what makes all this electricity work. And then I met Larry Woods through Vinny and things changed. And I, I'm starting to, uh, as a result of the Internet and just the, the way I read life, become more interested in finding out if if I do follow this road and make this thing and use it, will it improve my life? And that's if the, if you're gonna have a hobby, that might, at my age, I think that's a pretty well uh, it's a pretty well spent path. You know, it's not like a, I'm frivolously you know uh, going out drinking and getting high and shooting heroin and Fine, waking up in the street in the morning. No, no, no. None of that crap. You know, like Hansel would have you believe. I always thought that was kind of funny how he put that together. But, yeah, he's got... I'm a, I'm a drug-addled hippie. <laughs> and, uh, 
Oh, poor Hansel. Anyway, every time I do a show and I see the J Dread thing under IB Don C, I just can't help but giggle. He's he's like a, he's like a necessary evil in voting, you know. Because if you don't have an enemy, think about this one, voter. If you don't have an enemy, what's what's there to protect? You know, you need an enemy to protect yourself from. To need somebody else to intervene and protect you. Otherwise, what purpose do they serve? And I think it's all on a mental. It's like a brainwave or something. The, we're we're tied together in this in this invisible net of deceit and trickery right and they show us what they want us to see oh they're fighting in france oh they're fighting in africa oh they're fighting in portland you know day after fucking day after fucking day everybody doesn't get along look at how bad the world is way 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 you know and after a i don't know about 5:30 or so I I take the dog and I go up and meet the old lady at the at the train station and then I give her the dog and I go on to the store and go get us something from the grocery store cuz I like fresh shit and uh to me that's it sometimes in the winter time it's a little cold and I'm a little bitchy but it's the best part of the damn night <laughs> I don't know why I think it's uh I haven't lost the interest yet in being active you know I think that goes to with all this modern shit. People get lazy and don't want to. They don't want to walk anywhere. I'll tell you that. Woo. But here, fuck. I'm always walking into somebody. And there's no age. There's no age thing here. There are people out there on bicycles that are 20 years older than me, and they ride bicycles around town. So I don't see. Uh, I don't see the environment I'm in as any kind of negative to getting yourself out there in the world and staying physical if anything just looking at them kind of inspires me i see people pass by my house because it's on the main road we get the living room facing the, the street instead of the front of the house <laughs> it's backwards the front's in the backyard and i open up the blinds and all day long people on bicycles walk, riding by and it doesn't matter what the weather is if it's warm if it's hot if it's cold they're out there doing it and some people do it because they don't want cars. I'm not the only one that's refused to uh, be a slave to the petrol fuel, you know, thing, the insurance thing, and the license thing. And oh, please, Mister, will you take the gun out of my asshole? I don't have any uranium thing. But I don't know. I've still not seen that side of it. Whoops. <laughs> Here in, <laughs> in Denmark, but <laughs> but wherever there's the long arm of the law, <laughs> there's the short arm of the crook, and um, you know they they've made crimes out of crap that's so unimportant. It, it, why would you even want to waste your time doing it? Well, it's profitable as hell because the fines are so high. But that's because the money isn't worth it. See, we're in this wheel, this trap. You know, we're in this imperfect world where people justify their greed and their hatred toward other people through law. Oh, but the law says you have to do this. Well, I'm telling I'm tell you something, mister. The law says the law is going to turn on you someday. If it doesn't, you'll be one in, one in a million maybe. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good from where I'm sitting, anyway. Uh, of course, the stuff that we read about other people's homes is always negative. Always makes you look like you live in a shithole. So you could live in total paradise in your own life, and but say, "Oh, I live in Florida," and the person reading it or hearing it here is Florida. And go, oh, you live in a shithole. Nothing but hurricanes. <laughs> So, there, you know, we're all conditioned to this negative Nelly, oh, uh, I hope they all die, I hope the world ends kind of shit. And I, maybe we're making it come true doing it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fucking joke? That whatever you believe is real, is real. I'm not so sure I'm wrong. 
I believe that whatever I believe is real, and the second that I'm aware I've made that decision, whatever it is, it's real. Looking across the room, you know, whatever you see is what you want to see. I don't think that's just on a visual level. I think it goes way deeper. It goes into all see all that all that electricity and water that they've been pumping into us all these years and putting shit in the sky for us to breathe and inhale. And if they do it in small enough doses over long enough periods of time, then they can write the laws so that they don't get when they get caught or exposed that they don't have to pay us. And whatever happens is our fault. You know, well, you didn't stop us. They call it implied consent to those of you that don't know any better. There's even a an explanation for implied consent. Here, I think I'll show it to you. Because I don't think there's a lot of people that really, I don't know if they believe it or if they accept it. It's not like I've made it up. It's not like I haven't mentioned it. 57,000 nine hundred and eighteen times but oddly enough it doesn't seem to catch with uh the entire crew ain't picking this up so i'm gonna take implied consent off the google that's right i said google don't start and i'm gonna post it on the real liberty media.com chat for everybody to read because that's what this is the thing that fucks us all this is what Hal's talking about and it's uh, I believe that it's hard to not be angry at other people who support this and sit back and bitch but don't do anything if you sit back and resist by getting out of it that's doing something but if you just sit back and just bitch to complain and have a voice and all you're just wasting everybody's time no i didn't i copied and pasted that anti no that's what i was saying is that is a google search that exists for everybody to see but we're not told exactly how to look for it or exactly what it doesn't mean you know, this the, you could read this, and I can read this, and both come up with different, completely different explanations for what we just read. Now, what it means to me is if they don't ask you, and you didn't know they were asking, that doesn't matter. The thing is that they can do shit and just imply, eh, you're not going to say no, so we'll just do it. But without asking you first, they imply that you're going to say, yeah, and then they just go, oh, well, this is a new law. Bye. <laughs> Am I reading that wrong, sir? You think? Well, Cirque agrees with me. That's a good That's a good sign right there. I'd worry if hands didn't disagree with me. But Cirque, nah, Cirque's always on the money with me. I believe her 100%. Because if I believed her 110%, there'd be something wrong with my mathematical skills. That doesn't exist. I don't even know for sure if 100% exists, but I'm going to go with it because I like numbers with zeros in it. You know, And I like the number one because I'm Jewish. And when you're Jewish, think about this, fuckers. If I'm right, and I hope I'm not, but if I'm right, the Jews are running every fucking thing. So the nose and the circumcision... They might have fucked me all my life so far, but there's going to be a day. <laughs> there's going to be a time that my people are going to come forward and just tell everybody, hey, we own it all. Pay up. And I want to be on their side when they do it because I think they're going to get paid. They get away with everything. There's even a, I was talking about this guy earlier. What was his name? David Icke. He was explaining in writing, it's in writing, he's reading something that claims that Israel is above international law. Nothing anybody can do to Israel, no matter what they do. They can't be taken to court at any level by anybody. Wow. And and this is okay with people. This is, what, this is my biggest complaint is your politicians, my, I don't have politicians, okay? So if you claim politics... 
your politicians swear an allegiance to 8 million people, 15 if you count everybody on the planet, right? They claim there's 15 million Jews, and the people that they're claiming to be Jews are like me. We're not real Jews. Maybe we're mixed bread, or we borrowed the name to, to fuck everybody else, but there's no Jews. This is, it's all a big hustle. You're, you're being scammed. And there's proof that you're being scammed. The proof is nuclear reactors. The proof is everything. Look around you. All the complaining you do about this thing being wrong in that country and this thing being wrong in this country. That's just you seeing the world. Ooh. You know what I see? I don't think you, you're ready for what I see. but mm. I've tried to say it. Pancakes always says I'm bragging. So... Mm. But I guess it is, it is kind of. But I got a, um, I got everything that I want to have, that I believe exists, and the things that I believe are real, go a lot deeper than a cup of fucking coffee and a cigarette. There is, there's things in life you cannot see, visually to explain them. You, there, your other sense has got to step in and say, hey, did you notice that? And it may not be something that you saw. It may be something you heard. Or it may be just an idea that twinkled in the back of your mind for no particular reason. And the next thing you know, you're on a journey into the, you know, tomorrow and going somewhere. Mm, I don't know. Now I'm just like, uh, wow. Am I still on my journey? Maybe I'm still on my journey. That's why I'm comfortable with it. Because you don't have to move. I don't, I don't think... Uh, I don't think physically traveling is the whole thing. I think it's the mind thing that's attached to it. Because no matter where you go, you're still, that's where you're at. So the only things that changed are the surroundings. You're still the same, no matter where you go. And what I found was communicating with people, if, uh, if they have the upper hand in language, they feel more comfortable towards you. And, and, to, I mean, with a person with my skills in communicating in the first place, like if I wanted to sell something to somebody, uh, I don't need English as, as a tool to make money. That's secondary. Because at certain levels of life, uh, words just don't matter. You know what I mean? They only seem to matter is when you're trying to take advantage of somebody else is that's when words matter and uh like talking with Cirque she she talks one way excuse me and I I talk a completely different way than she talks but together when we we join forces and eh, when I'm a little tired or a little high I get I get confused my brain doesn't work as quickly and I get stuck on, can't make out a word. and It gets confusing. But, I mean, shit, that's what happens when you get tired. <laughs> so, I guess I'm, because of that, you know, it's like a gauge that things aren't as bad as you think. You're doing enough to become tired at night to go to sleep and make it to the next day and start again. And to me, that's a success. Um, I'm not so much worried about the communication crap. We always seem to get through it, no matter how badly I, <coughs> that I fuck up what I say to her. Uh, she always gives me a chance to, you know, explain what I meant. Because sometimes what I say sounds one way to her, but it was said in a different way to me because of the languages. You know, words mean one thing in English, and then you translate them to Danish. And sometimes they don't translate to the proper translation. This is why I don't buy this religious crap. You can't tell me. I'll tell you what. Why don't you take a few days and go learn how to read Hebrew. When you're done with that little project, get yourself an Old Testament and come back and tell me what it means write it all out and show me on the internet what it means word for word it from hebrew to english not from hebrew to king james so he could write his crap the way he wanted it written i i'm just not going to believe that we live with these results 
around us that we have now. And anything that we were told ever was based on anything but a manipulation of fact, no matter what it is. And that includes religion. And it, there's another topic, because in a perfect world, I would suppose there would be a supreme being that watched over all his little sheep and all... <laughs> Fuck you. Come on. How insane is that? That's like being aware of every cell in your body. It, it may be possible, but we're raised to believe, well, you only use 10% of your brain anyway. You're just a dumbass, so don't even waste your time. And that's... We're not encouraged to become anything. We're stuffed and shoved down into a fucking box to stop becoming anything. <laughs> Unless you consider yourself you know, like a field general and you can go yell at other people to go take bullets or some shit success. But mm. I, I got more respect for the pirate than I do the politician or the warrior. Fuck him. At least the pirate's a thief and he lets you know with his black ass fucking flag and his bombs and guns he ain't playing games but the politician does it through lies and they fuck you with every word they got and i just for once wish one of these pricks would just get up there and just be honest five minutes of honesty from a sitting politician in a seat he wouldn't last the night they'd take him out that's why we get what we get these people are intimidated by the people they work for and they don't work for us <laughs> <laughs> who, who, whoever us are, we're not them. Let's see. Anti says there's quite a bit of discrepancy between English speakers too. Too many words used to evoke emotional responses and not convey factual info. I agree with that. That's right. And that's a product of what Mary and Vince were doing with words to go back and see what the true meaning of because Webster here's another one Webster's dictionary he rewrote the dictionary to suit himself and here we are using these words we don't even know what the fuck they're the order is wrong it rings on a wrong harmony it's just bad for us what we're doing everything is bad for us so how do you survive this without wanting to murder everybody else there you go it's not real complicated it's just very difficult to not be an angry cunt and run around thinking you're better than everybody else it's that that is to to me seems to be the goal of life you know so you can run around and have a lot of money and be better than other people what the fuck does that even mean it's all stupid the things that i'm impressed with in life have absolutely nothing to do with money. In fact, if you added money to that thing, you just ruin it. That that's what I think of money. But we live, okay. Well, we're being uh, we're being held hostage, period. And if if you see it any differently than that, it's because you want to. This is the way I see it. You go, "Wow, that's because you want to." Right. The information I've received leads me to believe I'm in a fucking open-air prison. And if I don't dance when the bitch says dance, hey, sometimes they shoot you. Uh, if the internet is telling me the truth. Because I've seen links where now people are just getting pulled over for seatbelts and ending up shot by the police. Over what? I don't know. Uh, he didn't have a seatbelt on, but he was a wanted felon in, you know, Michigan. So I had to shoot him. <laughs> Your word against the cops. Try one in that argument. It's not likely. Mm. Then you got all that dash cams, and you got your Bible you're swearing on. You'd think that would pull some weight. You know, in a perfect world, this is how they run shit. They go, well, he swore on the Bible, so it's true. End of story. Wait a minute. <laughs> No, are you trying to tell me that people don't lie because they said the magic words, I swear on a Bible, it's true? Well, I think it was George Carlin kind of sorted all that out once and said, eh, bullshit. And he even went on to explain it in detail about how, you know, <laughs> if the book was this and the book was that. And here we are all these years later, 21 and 18, and people still 
claim that they claim they believe this book that they've never read because it's not how do you read that fucking mess it doesn't mean shit to me Woo, I'm probably going to lose all my read all, all my ratings now <laughs> all my readers <laughs> but yeah I've I've read bits of it to see what it was about now I just came out of it more confused than I did when I than I was when I opened the book. So I came to the conclusion, ah, we're all being fucking screwed one more time, bunch of liars. They'll tell you, well, this is his imp- interpretation of what that means. Why do you need another man's interpretation of what something fucking means? If you can read it yourself, you've made your interpretation when you read it. Well... That's because this is all this game plan they do with us. They bullshit us so much. We don't know when we're being lied to. They can lie right to your face and you go, oh, thank you, sir. Oh, please. Do you have any more? I, how much more do you want? Here, let me, get, let me buy you dinner. You're so wonderful. And for what? So you can have what? I don't know what you have through this begging people to lead you shit that's that's the problem that we we've got the collective problem is not standing up and saying fuck off and leave me alone we're all tied to it and i'm complaining like a 15 year old girl with a computer but at least i'm aware of what i want so and i'm not blaming you know i'm not blaming people i'm blaming the belief in the system that's where we're flawed is we're raised to trust this lying fucking void that it sucks everything around it up until it's nothing but a void and it just grows on energy and it gets bigger and bigger so whatever is going on around us it's so rarely positive that i understand you know why if you're threatening a country with, you know, oh, we're going to invade you from the south with a bunch of thugs and gang members. Yeah, the pussies are going to cower and start, say, hey, we need to send the military. And uh, Sure. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be afraid. It don't matter if you, uh, if you believe it or not. That's secondary. What they want is for you to get to that fear so that they can make a decision that's going to hurt people. And... But for a good cause, because that's the nature of this fucking game we're in. It's all negative. It's all designed against us. Surviving it every day is a fucking miracle. When you think about the shit, these fuckers, they've convinced people that using chemotherapy that never fucking works is a cure for cancer. Oh, and then you find out when you're a grown man, hey, guess what? Cancer cells cannot live in an alkaline um, based life what okay so they have answers to these problems and then they make something up to answer the problem that doesn't fix it but makes it worse and nobody that stands against it for one if they do stand against it they're in the damn game they get hurt fast they either lose their license or they get chased out of the the country it's the u.s i'm talking about and there's more than one. I mean, believe it or not, that it's not like uh, nobody has made an attempt to make this public. It's the problem is that the public doesn't want to believe that it's true. People do not want to know the um, Rockefeller medicine and this inoculations and injections. I started to get interested in that side of uh, the medicine when I was listening to Clint Richardson, and he had a guy. Um, can't see I'm so bad with names but the point of the whole story was in the 1850s is when they started to use the hypodermics the uh, inoculation thing came along and the story the other guy told to Clint was regarding they're they're changing us that's what evolution truly is not there's no natural evolution that they're speaking about there's a natural evolution, and then there's a hijacked evolution, and the one they hijacked has got needles and inoculations and duck cum or whatever the fuck, you know, little part of something else from an animal. They're going to put it in this shit, and then they're going to inoculate you with it. Now, the basic 
that got my attention was when you're it just a splinter in my finger because I've worked with wood for many years and I've fucked up and you get a little splinter or something and that little tiny fucking splinter will annoy you so you got to stop what you're doing and get something sharp and dig the fucker out well that's the same reaction that your blood cell works on your blood cells are in there doing things so when your body's injected with a foreign substance at that level of life your body is doing shit to that injection immediately you're not telling it to do anything it's doing what it does and these fuckers have got people conned into believing the exact opposite of the truth so that they could do this shit to us and make money off it. In fact, now it's a money for profit business. Healthcare. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I mean, to me, just the idea that if you went into this medicine thing and your big goal was to make money, keep your fucking mitts off me. I want somebody to help me in that area that would do it for free. Like Mary. Mary's been more help to me online with advice about herbs and oils than all the doctors I'd ever seen in my lifetime put together. If anything, those fuckers had me on a slow kill. And I think that the internet opened doors for me that... If I want to continue playing the game and live another day, do these things and chances are that you'll wake up in the morning. Not, oh, it's a perfect world, baby, and if you do this, I guarantee you that. No, 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 no. That's not how this shit works. But I do think that to some, um, I don't know if they call it chance or fate or whatever, but each person's life is what they want it to be. You know, and you make it up as you go. I don't think there's standard, you know, like at, at, at molecular levels, there's standards and all this other shit. But when you get into this physical world where we're interacting with other people and you can make choices and decisions. Well, the first thing is the fuel that you use dictates the abilities that you have. So I'm using myself, too. I'm not fucking perfect. I know that. But I'm happy. <laughs> so, and I'm a grumpy old man, but for the most part, I don't feel bad or anything. I'm just, uh, I'm just not a happy, you know, happy chipper. Like, Cirque is just a happy, smiley. That's just not me, but I'm, I'm not mean to people, I don't think. But I, I do recognize that, you know, I'm not all, hey, everybody, I love you, because I love the whole fucking world as, a, as a, a group, but I only like a few of them, you know, and that's people that reflect back to me what I'm putting out. That's, that's, that's what we do. It's not a judgment. It's just an explanation. You know, I get along better with Grimm and Rob Works because Grimm and Rob Works seem to be uh, outwardly spoken in, in the same direction that I go in. You know, if you're going to do something, be fucking responsible for it. Don't put your shit on the next guy to do. That's not right. And then you start thinking, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, don't send Jerry down to the border to protect Steve. You want the border protected, get you off your fucking ass and go protect it. Or shut up. Because <laughs> if it came down to, it, to that here, if the people were invaded, I'd have to choose a side. I'm not neutral at that point. I don't see an invasion happening here in this place. But <laughs> just to be dramatic, you know, in a perfect world, you know, Hans could see my, my homeland that I'm living in now invaded by tanks and shit. That would make him so happy. That's what he told me anyway. I believe him too. So what I, I will do every week as long as I can remember because I, I really don't wish Hansel any, nothing bad on Hans. I just want Hans to get everything that he wants me to have. And I've got plenty. So I hope you get everything I got. Everything and more. Because <clears throat> I'm not greedy enough to want the mansion and the yacht. But I'm greedy enough to want the, the wife and the dog. <laughs> So, and you know and that's that's the thing is the wife and the dog and then all the other shit just comes along with it 
And that's how I look at this whole game. Hey, I've almost managed. I got 14 minutes to make a full, in a perfect world, solo program. Because I, I just can't stay focused on one concept and sit here for, you know, talk to myself all this time about anything that's uh, typical. Ah, I don't want to be too. Hey, Vinny came back. Hey, Vinny. Mr. Vinny likes to do the 420, and I like to do that whenever I feel like lighting it up time. <clears throat> but I don't always announce it. I'm sure you can hear the lighter in the background. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out it's time to smoke. Unfortunately, some people need to be reminded. I guess they don't think of it for their self. Hey, that could be it. You know, I'm just more selfish when it comes to the pot, you know, and I think about it more. So somebody else that doesn't, you know, they do indulge, but they're, they don't can take it or leave it kind of thing. There's people that are like that. Unfortunately, I've never been like that. I, if I got it, I'm burning it. And if you don't want any more from me, there you go. But all that going out to get other people hound marijuana so they could join my fucking cult was a that was the biggest load of shit i ever heard crying out loud weed was hard enough to come about you know when i was young let alone um i wasn't a rich kid fuck just normal average so and i grew up in the days when weed was cheap to me but it was five bucks a damn um i don't know what could you get for five dollars when i was kid? half an ounce maybe I think it was about five bucks for a half ounce of decent weed. And it wasn't all this buds and all this crap hadn't started yet. We were still um, smoking. We were still sometimes smoking shake and getting good shake that was <laughs> worth the money at the time. But I, I do remember kids that um, they didn't have the in ingenuity. You know, if their mom and dad didn't give it to them, they were fucking lost. They didn't know how to use the society around them to, to cash in and make money. And me, <laughs> I'm going to brag about a, an old story when I was 14. Because when you're a kid, you you got to do something with your time. And when I was 14, the big thing was pinball. And I was really, I could take a quarter and go into the place and never put another quarter in the machine. And other kids, and it had the four-player machines. So the other kids would, hey, can I play? Give me a quarter. <laughs> and sometimes I would get caught. And sometimes I would get told, blah, 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 don't do that. But for the most part, you know, it was, we could play all all, all day off my, um, off my initial quarter putting it in the machine. So they made their money off us instead of off the time on the pinball machine, off the sodas and food and cigarettes and whatever else we could talk them into selling us so that was uh that was my teenager years people were lax and um there was a p the pizza parlor i'm talking about it's been shut down for many years now but at when i was uh when i was a kid going there the other kids that worked there were that i think they had 16 you had to be 16 to actually hold a job working at the place so they were either 16, 17, or 18 because some of them had to deliver and a few of them were older. But they would uh, lock the doors and some of the local kids that we'd be, we were like there all the time in the evenings, you know, afternoon, evening. Uh, they'd lock the doors and they'd roll up a big pizza and put weed in it. <laughs> we'd sit there and eat pizza and get high and play pinball. And that, that was my rowdy, you know, that's what I remember of my, all this stuff that disappointed everybody else was me getting stoned with the kids that were older than me and eating pizza and playing games. And it, it wasn't as uh, dramatic and exciting as everybody wanted to talk about. You know, I was just enjoying myself, but the rumors and the stories that other people would tell about it were always way better than what really happened. <laughs> We were just in a, in a restaurant at night playing games and eating pizza and drinking Cokes. Nothing more exciting than that. But, <laughs> boy, the reputations. And we and we did, we were racist, too, because there was a guy named, um, what was his name? Con, his first name was something. Con, Kim, right? 
Kim Kanemitsu. All right, he had a, a Japanese mother and a Mexican father. We called him a Choling because he was Mexican and, and Japanese. It was the weirdest fucking shit, man, growing up where I was. At that period, with 14, 15, you started to meet other kids that were uh, mixed race, even weirder than I was. So it was a... Uh, it was a special time for me. That was my perfect world. I think uh, 13, 14, 15, right in there. And then after that, start things start getting real. You get driver's licenses and you buy cars and people want insurance and all kinds of crap that goes along with life, you know. And you start learning about it, apartments and rent and jobs and all that kind of crap. But, as we all know, those days are gone. Now what we got left is this great big clusterfuck. And we got a used used up game show host as the face of the power of the most important fella on the planet Earth. The President of the United States. And I think he's a dick. But I thought the last guy before him was a dick and the guy before him and on and on and on and on and on. No matter how far back you go, you can find what the fucker did that was bad too. They might have done something good along the way. Kennedy did a lot of good shit. Lincoln did a lot of good shit. But in the overall, in the end game, all they did was just tighten the fucking chains around our collective fucking throat and promise us something that we'll never get. And tell us and lie to us that what we have is the best and good for us. Yeah. But maybe the good is out there, right? It's available to you if you can find the answers. And the internet is the tool to use to answer your health problems and your mental problems and your social problems and all the fucking problems that we make up in our mind, right? So you can go to the internet now and find out that if you eat this certain food, it will change your physical balance. And when you do that, your mind improves as you physically heal, so does your brain. Hey, Vinny, Moose Girl, and everybody that's still here. I'm almost done. I made it. So it's like 54 after the hour. I could be myself now. I don't have to pretend to be Flash. <laughs> the, no, actually, I, I'm i doing that. I don't know why. See, I my wife says the torture is almost over. No, I want to do this. I'm just not uh, very comfortable. It's not a natural state of being for me to talk about this shit out loud, for one. But to do it alone is even weirder than doing it with Mary or Vinny or Grim or Moose or Rob Works or Woody. Whoever else is on the other end just makes it easier for me because then I like to screw around with voices and interrupt and have fun. Hmm. Anyway, we made it through a perfect world. Thanks, everybody, for playing along with my crazy rants about the way I see this crazy world because... I'm having a good time in my life. My personal life is wonderful. But the world that I see on the internet could use a little improving. You know, uh, I'd like to see people get along better. Like Rob and Donna seem to be getting along just fine. We got us a, a new member, Donna Van Meter. And she's been over on the to the real liberty dot org. Go open a page over there if you haven't already. It's getting They're getting their shit together. It's going to be a little bit of a crawl, I think. But the coding is uh, very complicated for the format. So it's got to be done a certain per particular way. And the guys are doing, they're keeping up. They're doing uh, good enough for me. But my, you know, my expectations of others may not be as good as yours or as high as yours. So I, I don't know. But I still like it. Grim, you're doing you and Bo and, and Ant. The group of you together seems to be uh, a nice mix. I'm very comfortable with the realliberty.org. So if you care about what I say, I say go over there and check it out. You don't even, wait, no, you do have to um, join before you can look. I'm not sure. 
But maybe there's a way to just open it up and take a peek and see if you want to even look at it. I don't know. Do that confusing nerd stuff with the nerds. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Miss Kate. I have no idea what I was talking about. But some about energy and maybe we're not here. Maybe we're here. Maybe not. Shit like that. <laughs> Having fun on Tuesday night. But I, I really hope next week that Rob Works comes and gives me his opposing viewpoints. And we can chitter chatter about the perfect world that we all want to live in. And I think it's a state of mind, maybe. But the fuel intake still, it, see, that that's where your imperfections come in. But maybe there's a level of mind where you can be comfortable enough to call it perfect if you want to <laughs> I, I don't know <clears throat> and anyway today is tuesday night so t uh, mr art bailed on us so we've got grammy mary in her rocket chair flying through tomorrow night on halloween so she might even have a broom <laughs> oh i don't know a broom and a cape. I mean, because you got to remember, Mary's the woman that used to do the dork table with me wearing an Eeyore suit. It was the funniest fucking thing. I, I, it goes back a few years, me and Mary with his dork table. Anyway, and then on art again, disappointment art, come back, fill that seat art like only you can. Uh, Friday, we've got Miss Mary one more time flying back on the rocket chair program. And after that, we got Grimner and Moose Girl and the Freaker's Ball on Friday night. And then on Saturday, I'm the dork at the dork table. Flash. And then on Sunday, we got some uh, um, Grim will play blues in the morning. And then he opens up this, this addictive damn game. It's called Trivia. Hard as hell. Some of the questions, I never even heard of this shit. Sometimes I, I know things that nobody else has heard of. It's really wild to play the game. Uh, but if it's the common stuff, we got Grimner and Moose Girl and Kate Fingers. I'm telling you, flying fucking fast. And there you go. But after that, Hal Anthony comes in to whip everybody's ass. And he's doing a good job. I mean... I like Hal's uh, side of it. If I if I ever decide to fight the state, I'm using Hal's methods and his information. But I am a cricket, and I'm not fighting anybody. I'm fighting everybody. <laughs> so it's a little different. And then after that, I come back next week on Tuesday at the same bat time, same bat channel with my pal Rob Works, and we will discuss... The do's and don'ts of the cold bean dip enema and other topics. So, <laughs> thanks a lot and uh, you guys have a good night. Thanks a lot for playing with me here at the In a Perfect World program. G good night.